What is going on everybody, it is your boy P, and today we are going to be looking at the Doppler effect and how it relates to sound. So to get us started, we're going to listen to a soundbite that I prepared for us that illustrates the phenomenon of the Doppler effect. So let's take a listen. So what you guys just listened to was a police car passing by and as it passed us, it got louder and louder. And this illustrates the Doppler effect. So first things first, before you, we dive into the Doppler effect, make sure to check out Wallace's video on wave motion. There'll be an annotation on the screen. And once you watch that video, we can come back to this one. So here's an animation of a plane that is moving and is moving past us. And as it moves past us, we see the sound waves that it emits. Now, it's important to note that the sound waves that the plane emits are all emitted at the same frequency. So that the waves, the number of waves between the plane and us, the observer, is the same. So as the plane gets closer and closer to us, the distance between each successive crest of a wave gets smaller and smaller. And so the waves behind the plane spread out more while the waves in front of the plane have to pack in together. So although the frequency of the sound waves that the plane emits itself is the same, regardless of where it is in respect to us, the perceived frequency that the observer experiences gets larger and larger as the plane gets closer and closer. That sound of the siren we heard in the beginning gets louder and louder as the police car passes us. So now we can compare when two things are approaching and when two things are receding or moving away from each other. So we have two formulas for when the perceived frequency when they are approaching and the perceived frequency for when they are receding. So the perceived frequency when they are approaching is the original frequency emitted by the source times the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the observer over the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the source. And while, when the two things are receding, we can say that the perceived frequency equals the frequency emitted by the source times the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the observer over the velocity of sound plus the velocity of the source. Now the idea here is that the velocity of the observer when the two things are approaching is positive in respect to the source but the velocity of the source when the two things are approaching is negative in respect to the observer. So that's where we get our plus and minus signs. And for receding, it's the same logic, we just switch the signs. So more than just the formulas we have here, it's important to understand that as the two things approach each other, the frequency gets larger, and as two things move away from each other, the frequency gets smaller. In addition to the frequency getting larger and smaller respectively, the velocity of sound is the velocity of sound in air, but it can be in any medium. Usually though, sound waves are transferred in air. Now let's take a look at a practice problem that applies all the concepts we just talked about regarding the Doppler effect as it relates to sound. So we have a siren of a police car at rest that emits a predominant frequency of 1600 hertz. And the question is, what frequency will you hear if you are at rest and the police car moves at 25 meters per second. The first part of the question asks if the police car is moving towards you, while the second part talks about whether the, when the police car moves away from you. So using our formula that we learned in the first part of this video, we know that the perceived frequency equals the frequency of the sound waves emitted by the police car times the velocity of sound in air, plus the velocity of the observer over the velocity of sound and air minus the velocity of the source. And then we know that the velocity of the observer, which is us, right, the police car is passing us, is going to be zero because we are at rest. So plugging the values, we get that the perceived frequency of the observer is 1726 hertz. So for part B, we do the same thing, except we apply the formula, the second formula that we learned in this video. So it's important to note that the signs change because we are now looking in the opposite direction when they're moving away from us. And plugging in the values again, we get that the perceived frequency of the observer when the, the cop car is moving away from us is 1,491 hertz. 
Again, it is important to note that we are at rest, so the velocity of the observer is going to be 0 meters per second. So that is all guys for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, the more you know, the better you are.